Hello, uh, we are going to review the static equilibrium through this example. Uh, <clears throat> we, um, this is a little bit complicated example in terms of diagram um, and the situation and how many systems there are in the same diagram. And that is a very normal thing to happen in application of static equilibrium. But when you apply static equilibrium, you actually work um, work at forces on a particular body. Okay, so you have to uh, very carefully select uh, the body that uh, to focus on. All right. So here you have the base of a crane. Uh, a to B is called boom of the crane. This is uh, this is called boom. This boom, the, the structure, it's called boom of the crane. Um, there is a cable that goes over a pulley uh, where uh, the load is supported. Uh, <clears throat> um, and there's a base which is uh, balances the whole thing, otherwise it's going to tip over, right? So this, this is a, uh, has a special mechanism to balance huge weights there. <clears throat> Uh, now the question we want to answer is um, uh, what is the tension in the cable? That may be the only question that you may have to answer. But here we also want to answer uh, the boom uh, had these forces from the load and the tension uh, and then there's the forces at the base over here. So the boom has basically uh, on the two ends of the boom your forces and the question is about these two questions are about two ends of the boom which means boom is the system we should focus on it's not asking what happens to the base you know so if if, if i focus on the base there will be forces at c and there will be forces at a <clears throat> and then the base will also have a gravity of the base and then normal to the base. So the base is, uh, it's important to notice I'm not going to focus on the base. So my system that I will focus on is actually this. Um, this is the system. And I'll first uh, get a sense of how, uh, what are the forces on this system. So it's kind of like a, um, it's a really, really simple. It's like that. Um, so on, on this, there is some force on point A, which we don't know, which we can just say uh, F1, F2, normally we X and Y component. And those are these forces, F1 AX and F2 is AY. This is the answer. So, in case uh, uh, you you can pause the video and you want to solve it by yourself, you can check with the answer. Okay. And if you want to continue, I'm going to continue now. So, this is the boom. And so, there are two forces at A. Uh, and then at the center is center of gravity is the weight of the boom, and it's given as big M G the length of the boom is L over there you have a load load pulling down but there's no acceleration so this the tension here is just little M G from the load and then the tension in the string is is pulling in that direction and so this is another angle, and this angle, these two angles are not same. You can see that this with the horizontal, and that was not with the horizontal. So uh, that angle is say phi. You know, if, if you work out some, so this this angle will be this theta. This will be this bigger angle, and this angle will be theta minus phi. In case you need it, I, I don't think we need it, but there, those will be the situation. 
I'll work out symbolically only. Um, uh, so we'll say these uh, no unknowns are these guys. So naturally, there are three unknowns, and all the forces are in one plane. So this situation is completely solvable, okay? So there are only three unknowns here. Uh, well, we, um, we, we say that this boom is in static equilibrium, meaning the, uh, for, uh, we'll have the torque about any point will be zero. That's one condition. And, to, uh, and the forces will be, the net force will be zero because the boom is not accelerating. So acceleration the boom is zero. So um, I always like to see how much I can get from the torque equation. Usually torque equation uh, is, uh, is very useful in most situations where static equilibriums are applicable. So although people write force equations first and then the torque equation, I like to just reverse it and see how much I get out of torque equation itself. So let's look at the torque equation. And this can be about any pivot point. So if I say I want to solve for tension, if something could just get rid of this, anything else, not the tension. So these two unknowns can get rid of this. This is going to be my pivot point. So I will find torque of all these other forces about this pivot point. Okay, so the forces to work is this, this, and this. So I need to figure out the torques of these three forces. Well, torque, uh, you have some practice with torque. Um, how do I figure torque? Yeah, well, I do a lever arm. So I make this as long as this is a line of force. Uh, line of force. And I go to the pivot and drop 90 degrees to it. That is the lever arm. So this is the lever arm for mg. And this side is L over 2 in this triangle. And it's a right angle triangle. So lever arm for big MG is, is adjacent L over 2 cosine theta. Fine. In some places it is sine theta. So that's why I memorized the formula that lever arm is always going to be sine theta. Can get you in big trouble. All right. So always work out this triangle and see what you're looking for as a lever arm. Um, now, now we go to this force. I do exactly the same process. I go with this and from here I drop 90 degrees. So we are looking for this big side, which is kind of similar to what triangle I worked out. And so it's gonna again uh, be very similar, but this will be L cosine theta, correct? Now this one is kind of a little tricky, right? So if if I extend this, oh, let's extend this. Uh, I, I think I had a ruler. So if I take this and extend this, and I go here and I drop 90 degrees to that. So I drop 90 degrees to that. This is 90 degrees. So what we are looking in this triangle, can you can you see what the lever arm will be in this triangle? Just a moment. I, okay, let's, I, I gave you enough time. Uh, so it will be, uh, it will be this distance. That's, that's how far the line of force is. So th this is the lever arm. Well, I know this as a triangle, and I know this angle. This is opposite of that angle. So that that is that angle is phi. So R per tension is just uh, L sine phi, not theta, because that angle is phi. And that uh, for us it's ten degrees. Okay. Now this this is a hard one, and. I hope you practice it. This triangle kind of will upside down triangle. So it requires a little thinking about it. So if I look at torque, uh, torque from big MG, uh, if from here, that's actually trying to rotate this way. 
so clockwise little mg is also this way but tension is trying to rotate that way so tension will be uh, we'll say counterclockwise and this is clockwise and this is clockwise and we'll say counterclockwise is plus and clockwise minus minus and add them up to zero right so i'm gonna get m g this lever arm l over 2 cosine theta let's come with a minus minus little mg l cosine theta these are because of uh, clockwise and then tension uh, l sine of phi and that equal to zero so l actually kind of cancels out i don't really need to know l for this part uh, tension and everything else is known in here you can see the tension is going to I can move this on the other side and divide by sine phi cosine theta common so I get a cosine theta and the G is also common uh, and I, I divide by sine phi this, these are common things and this this gives me a big uh, capital M over 2 and then a small letter M like that so th this is tension it's pretty cool uh, I can just plug in numbers now and I don't know if I plug in numbers so uh, I got the right answer but actually I got this number by plugging into this kind of formula um, how about uh, what are the forces at this point well for that I need to uh, balance the net force this is the torque equation I need to have force equation so you can draw a free body diagram if you like uh, uh, and so you collapse it and then uh, all the x comes so some some of the fx equal to zero and some of the fy equal to zero so if you look at the fx if we had a diagram earlier so i will get f1 so this equation working on this equation i get f1 is a positive nothing from mg nothing from this thing but the tension uh, tension is actually um, you, you can see the tension is going to be if it's that way so the x will be use this angle so the ten, tension is a trouble one right so you have a tension force this way and x axis that way y axis that way this angle is theta minus phi so tension will be minus t cosine theta minus phi equal to zero so this that tells me what f1 will be t cosine theta minus phi so i got the x components if this that's the f1 to get f2 i do the this equation that equation would be i go uh, y axis pointed up so i get a f2 that's i pick the f2 and then uh, i have a uh, go to the mg that's minus capital mg this is another minus minus mg I go through all the forces and when I come to tension so here's tension that's the, uh, this will be negative T sine theta minus phi equal to zero and so all, everything else here are known so because the tension is known I don't need to complicate the formula by copying this over there I just use T as this big mess over here so this will give me F2 equals to mg plus mg plus t sine theta minus phi okay this is a very good problem because it's got a whole bunch of uh, uh, issues that you have to deal with uh, finding components of forces in the right way finding uh, lever arms of torques sometimes sine sometimes cosine then thinking which is clockwise counterclockwise 
uh, I, I hope you'll keep this problem in mind and maybe practice problems like this to get better at this. Okay, take care, bye.